Okay, I'm ready. How are you? Such a beautiful day outside, right? A perfect day. I'm sorry I cannot offer you the option of going outside. I saw yesterday from my office in the library a small class that used the tables between the library and the union. Good for them. Now, we are going to quickly review the rest of the examples of documents to be included in the final project. <coughs> Again, this was part of an activity, but also to have an idea of how to proceed for the first step, which is also in many ways the most important for the final project, where you have to process and catalog a series of relevant documents showing your understanding of the topics of the class. What is really relevant? Because there are a lot of things in the sources that I listed in the page on the format, the methodology of the final project that are about the automobile, but they're, they're not all completely relevant for our project. There are set, many of them that are so generic, so superficial, or so technical, so factual, that there is no cultural analysis that can be performed on those documents. So it's important to stay away from documents that are not relevant or that are only marginally relevant, they're merely adequate, and try to select things that are good or very good examples of how the culture of technology, the social culture evolved around the consideration or the representation of technology. Once we've got past this part of the class, I'll go, I'm going to introduce today's movie, which is Traffic from 1971 uh, by Jacques Tati, a French actor and director, Oscar winning uh, director. And we're going to, to see uh, a, a good chunk of the beginning of the movie, and then we'll, we'll see if uh, we don't have enough time, I might uh, reintroduce the film uh, in the plans for next week to show the conclusion, the last 10 minutes or so. Um, in, in reference to this, keep in mind that I just decided to add a link that was listed under week 10 as a required reading. So I've added to the readings due next week this short article or review. It's an excellent review. Uh, and it's the one that was included when the movie was redistributed in, in 2013 or 18 by Criterion after it was restored. Uh, and uh, it, it is not a, a traditional review. It's an in-depth treatment of the topics of the film. It's, it's quick reading, it's not very long. So keep in mind that this was just added it was there, but it was there among links that were optional. It is now a required reading, okay? So some of the examples you find in the second part of the list from the page about the methodology and the format of the final project are ads. I've had plenty of students in the past working on ads with mixed results, because of course, every single publication that you find listed among the links includes at least some ads about the automobile because the automobile was a big ticket item. And of course, marketing was necessary in order to induce buyers to spend thousands of dollars, often as much as a small house or apartment to buy something that was not regarded as indispensable because the world was functioning very well with horses and carriages, and it didn't matter whether you had money enough and space enough to have your own horse. 
your own carriage or multiple carriages because you could hire one for just a ride for the day if you needed it. The transportation of goods worked efficiently enough and in many places, take a place such as New York City, it's not like the introduction of vehicle, vehicles has made the delivery of goods much faster, right? Uh, in general, vehicles, for example, within Manhattan travel just a little faster, barely faster than the average walker, right? So vehicles, whenever this was tested, I saw a video recently on YouTube with a test that was done between two individuals that are trying to reach the same destination. One is using just walking there. The other is using a vehicle. In the end, the vehicle uh, had an average speed of 4.8 miles, I think. And four miles, someone your age is, is good average speed, a kind of speed that can be uh, used for even more, held for even more than an hour. So plenty of ads. Some of the specialized magazines may have hundreds of ads of automobiles in each monthly issue. However, a lot of them are not particularly relevant because they are generic or because they may have one interesting sentence, one interesting illustration, but they're one trick pony, right? You cannot develop the analysis beyond pointing out, oh, this looks interesting because they say this automobile is made for women for this reason. But if all you have to work with is a short phrase, then how are you going to develop a couple, at least a couple of paragraphs of analysis, right? It, it, the analysis would be as simple as, as simple as pointing out, look, these are the words used in this sentence. And that will be it. Nothing to unpack, okay? So let's look at some examples to get an understanding of what we are saying. So I don't know if you still remember working on this. Two people, when we did the activity, were assigned to this. Uh, and I'll, if, you, if you remember what you did with this or how you scored this document, I'd be interested in hearing your opinion. So this is the uh, Peerless 1909 model. You find a bit of text, right? starting with keywords such as science comfort, and then these qualities are distinctive peerless features. Right today, to have our catalog, every dealership, every company had catalogs that were sent to the consumers. Keep in mind that mailing catalogs were very successful during that time, that people used catalogs for all kinds of orders and purchases at the time mailing catalogs were like Amazon today. Uh, they were competing very strongly with stores. Then you have this uh, limousine, you have the driver with a long overcoat in the, the front, separated from the cabin in the back, and in the cabin in the back you have two wealthy ladies and you have New York City in the back with a park and a skyscraper and some more text. So anyone who worked on this is still here today and have a recollection? Um, I gave it like a one or a two. I mean, mm, yeah, pretty I much. There's no like emotions or feelings or anything you can elaborate or like pull out from. Yeah, you, you can say a little thing about the representation of classes in here, the separation between the wealthy passengers and driver, right? But uh, you run out of steam pretty soon in terms of things you can say about this. So 
barely above a two, not even worth of a three. It could be a 2.5 if you can really stretch it without being repetitious in your analysis, but not enough to work with. Looks interesting, but you can find better. Okay. Thank you. And we have a short text in here called speed and it's kind of it's the kind of humorous text that was a very popular subgenre for magazines during this period so people whatever the main focus of the magazine was people expected to find vignettes humorous vignettes uh, short jokes oftentimes these publications included a full page or a full two pages uh, of, of short jokes with some illustrations and also short stories for entertainment. So this is the story of someone who buys a car. They have a driver, a chauffeur, and at the beginning they want to go slow, but the, the more they go out with the automobile and the faster they want to go. So it's a humorous piece about getting addicted to the feeling of speed, right? And it feels like an addiction because at some point it doesn't produce the same result unless you go faster and faster to find the same strong feelings, reactions you felt when you drove the automobile, okay? So who worked on this? Yes. Uh, I thought it was like right around a three because it lacked a lot of details so short. Yeah, like, but but yeah. at least a three. Yeah, but like, so, he, like you said, he's not not incredibly good, but something yeah. you can work on. Yeah. Because you have a story, it does develop. You have a theme that you not only can explain, but you can also possibly connect with other documents, either from your same collection or from the readings of the class, which is a perfectly acceptable way to develop the analysis and the treatment of the document. So yeah, we were in agreement. I would also give it a three. You can find, even though the story is short, you can find enough language that uh, will, um, will support the analysis. Look at the conclusion. I'm out for fun, letter zip, letter zip. This is not steamroller. Let's have some speed, etc. okay? This is an illustration, and you, again, it's easy to find them in the sources. You have a car that has gotten stuck, and the owner and the driver are here at the center of the vignette. It was common in this kind of situation to call for help. This is reminiscent, for example, of the situation described in the sonnets by Alfredo Testoni. That would be a good way to expand this. The theme is getting even because, of course, the idea is that people from the countryside are not, not big fan of the automobile. They're rather anti-motorists, and therefore they, they, they're, glad, they're glad that people with the automobile are having uh, problems, right? So, Yes, the boy is saying the, wor the word uh, went out, the news of this accident went out, but rather than running to help and rescue the car from uh, the mud, people are celebrating, say, oh, oh the, there is a car stuck, okay, give me another drink. Okay, so uh, I don't remember at this point because we only had enough people for 13. Uh, Jenna, you worked on that? Yes. What did you think of it? Borderline, right? Yeah, so because it's very short. Yeah, exactly. So not 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 enough to yeah. develop the analysis. So you can show like there was negative reactions as well, but you really can't do much when there's not enough to go off of. So it's pugnant, pugnant, but from the semiotic point of view, the message, it, 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 
you can describe it in two sentences and you don't need to go deeper into analysis unless it could be a three. As I said, if you manage to expand the analysis by saying, look, we've seen this trope of the stack automobile in other texts and the best reference would be the reading the sonnets of Gaetana, the old woman whose daughter is going out with the Marquise who has a car and they always have breakdowns. So that could save it from oblivion. But if you have documents that are better, this could be part of a short list. And then when you get to the end and you have 10 or 15 and you have to reduce it to five or six for the project, you say, well, I'm not going to keep this because I have something stronger, something better, something more exciting. But the idea is that you go through the process. You, you don't stop at the first five documents that look acceptable, right? That you invest some time. And again, try to realize what works for you, right? Don't try to impose on yourselves a topic that makes the research of documents too difficult, too burdensome, too boring, too painful, okay? Look at the sources first. And perhaps when you start seeing one or two documents that you identify as interesting, from there you can start building up a topic. Although, as I said, it is not a requirement that all documents uh, belong to the same topic, okay? They could be connected loosely, okay? Because, as I said, in order for the project to be manageable, pre-selecting a topic might uh, uh, take, might, might impose too much time on you uh, to, to complete the research. Okay. So, who worked on this? Did you, Justin? Yeah. Okay, what did you think of this representation? Uh, we have a automobile driver who seems to, whose body seems to come out of the car and is being called the centaur or the modern version of the centaur, which is a mythological creature that is a horse with the bust and the head of a man called otters. What do you think in terms of the usability for the final project? Um, I think we're about two to three. Mm, yeah. Um, I was more in touch with the reactions. It's nice, right? But it doesn't give you enough material not even for a total of five or six hundred words. You, you would have to really stretch it. One way to stretch this would be to compare this to another mythological representation twisted in the direction of the representation of the car, which is, if you remember from the exhibition of MoMA called Ottomania, there is one illustration that I used the first or the second week where you see a car in the stars and the driver has kidnapped a woman. The woman is naked on the car and, and you have the same mix of technology and mythology. So that could be a way to rescue this, but it, it would take some finessing to do it. Otherwise, yes, poignant, interesting, but not enough to unpack. It's a one punch kind of document. Jason, you also worked on this, or? Yeah, I worked on 13. Okay, no, no, I, I saw you were nodding. That's why I asked. And this is another one. Of course, we, we cannot see it well because it's printed in the wrong direction. So you have a couple of lovers, right? Uh, what does it say? Through... No, though the slay, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. So 
uh, it, it's about having confidence and being fearful for fast uh, driving. Again, and, and was this Jason yours or the yeah, next one? The next one. Yeah, this was mine. Yeah, I, what did you think? Yeah, can't believe it. I mean, yeah, not enough, yeah. right? Interesting, but not enough. Yeah, there's not really much to say about it. Yeah, absolutely. And this, I think, was the last one that was assigned in class that day, right? So this is yours, Jason. Yeah. Um, what did you think of this ad? There is a lot of text and an, and an illustration with a lot of elements, right? You have a carriage, you have stores, you have an electric car. The style makes it uh, identifiable. Cannot be completely sure, but uh, it looks like an electric car. And in fact, it is the car of the, of the ad. So yes, it is electric. Two women here, a single man, wealthy man here, delivery vehicles in the back. So a lot of elements. What did you think, Jason? Um, so I gave it like a three or four, only yeah. for the fact that um, the one it carried, it had a lot of imagery. And then two, yeah. it, uh, it's, it's, a, um, it's an ad, but it's talking about an electric bulb car, but it's also, um, Speaking to uh, gender as well because it's it's more leaning towards women. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that you here it is, use, yeah. right? Women of refinement operate the Waverly with utmost ease, and ne neither chauffeur, coachman, nor escort. Yeah, so right. So that goes to like the uh, the the excitement and enthusiasm um, for like an automotive technology. So I feel like that in itself would, would like be like a three or four. Yeah, I would say so. Even a four, you can if you can get all the elements out, right. right? Because there is this interesting reference to the idea that women have to be independent, right? They don't, they shouldn't have someone to chaperone them or to take them around. That women from this era want more freedom. And then you have an interesting social representation. The women are out going to shopping, right? Go, go ahead. And, and it, it actually works perfectly with, um, with uh, the, uh, the lightning conductor. Yep, yep. Um, as, as you can see how like Molly was, um, and in terms of this, it would work both well, like paired well together. Yeah, and, and Molly herself has a chaperone who's Aunt Mary, but Aunt Mary doesn't really perform the role of chaperone because she never intervenes to stop Molly or uh, to, to uh, tell Molly not to do something uh, or, or to be aware of dangers in the, caused by the proximity with this man who is the chauffeur. But we have the women going out shopping, of course, wealthy women by themselves, whereas the less fashionable women are still relying on the carriage, so there is this implied comparison. You have a professional who's, and they're referring to professional, to busy men or professional men who are working, right? Society women are those who socialize because shopping is part of the process of socializing. And so professionals are going around in the car, deliveries, deliveries are being made in, in this urban setting. So there is a lot that you can explain in the analysis from the illustration and a lot that you can quote from in the narrative, which is slightly longer than usual, whereas a lot of ads have a few lines or maybe a paragraph. But once you take out the t details, the technical details of the car, you, you're left with not much. As I said, you can work with ads. It looks easy. However, you have to sift through a lot of them before you find one as good as this one. A lot are just plain, simple. Our car is faster, more reliable, less expensive, more comfortable. But what are you going to do with that, right? Not as much as what you could do with something as rich as that. Okay, and, and that's where I'll stop. I, I think I've provided enough examples. And again, the last... Um, assignment, which is due two weeks from now, November 9th, has the same purpose, 
is not, you, you don't have to present the full treatment for a document or two. You have to just explain why you've chosen or you might choose those documents. And so that I can provide feedback and tell you, yes, this is good enough for the project or there is more or, or this is completely wrong for the project so that you can be on track and work on that. Okay, even before November 9th, you can contact me or schedule an appointment to discuss the details of the project. Okay, so let's talk briefly about traffic. In 1971, two movies came out where the automobile was central not only to the plot of the film, but to the visual style of the movie. Interestingly, both movies were movies with a, an incredibly small number of lines. Movies of today are full of talks, right? Uh, I, I dislike most movies that are shown in theaters today where they have to explain the film. They have to explain the situation or the conclusion. That's not a film. It looks like a film with a book or a film with instructions. The 1960s, the 1970s were the time where the dominant style was the camera stilo, which is a French expression that says the camera is the pen, meaning you're using the camera to compose the story, not the lines, not the script. It's a film, it's not a book. So a film is made of images. And these two films are Traffic by Jacques Tati and uh, Le Mans by, uh, well, Steve McQueen was, was the soul and the mind behind the film Le Mans even though by the end of the movie, they took the film from him and his own production company. He had produced the film, but he ran out of money and in order to secure funds to finish the film, uh, as I will explain uh, uh, next week or, or two weeks from now, he had to sell the rights to the film. Even he had to uh, uh, renounce uh, it, his stipend for, for the part he played. So he played the part as an actor, didn't make a cent out of the film altogether. And both Trafic and Le Mans emphasize the visual aspect much more than the script. In uh, this particular film, Trafic, you find a few more lines, but interestingly, the audio is mixed with the images in a different way. That is to say, when the characters are talking, you can hear the lines in the background together with the rest of the noise. So they don't come to the foreground from the point of view of sound. And usually, if you're not looking at the subtitles, and of course I'll have the subtitles, not only because it is a French movie, but then there is some English because one of the characters, Maria Kimberly, is, is American. Uh, but normally, if you don't have the subtitles, you just catch a few words, not an entire line. Because in some ways, this movie is a pantomime. And the actor himself, Jacques Tati, was a mime also. And uh, he appeared in, on theater, in, in, on TV, as a mime, with some famous sticks that you can still find on YouTube. For example, I, I recommend that you look for an interview with, I think was British TV, uh, where he explains how traffic police uh, uses their body differently in different countries. The, and he does the British cop regulating traffic. This was very common in the past. Not every intersection had a, a traffic light or during busy hours, as you can see even now in New York, 
a traffic policeman would be there to regulate the traffic. And so he's just using his arms and gestures and face, he's reproducing an entire uh, scene. In Le Mans, as we will see, you have the story of a race where the real protagonist is the car and the car is being treated like a, a sacred object because you have hundreds of thousands of people who have converged onto the city of Le Mans outside of Paris for this famous race that is still in existence, the 24 hour of Le Mans that takes place every year in June. And for most of that film, you just see the, the, the cars going by. Even though everything was really highly choreographed. We have entire movie, entire books that were written on the movie Le Mans, documenting, and, and we have the testimonials from the people involved, documenting how Steve McQueen, who's essentially the director of the film, even though his name doesn't appear as the director, spent an entire day for a single overtake, for a single short scene in which a Ferrari overtakes a Porsche, or vice versa, okay? And honestly, there hasn't been a single movie as with such a high focus on car racing uh, since uh, Sid McQueen's Le Mans. Traffic is a different kind of film. It's supposed to be a comedy, but it's a comedy that is very quirky, very odd. It's an ironic representation of modern life, where you see what becomes comedic is this constant repetition of gestures by modern people. It's like modern life for someone who was born in 1907, like Jacques Tati. 1907 is when Ford comes up with the idea of the assembly line, where the first modern assembly lines are realized at the Ford factories. And it, it looks like for someone who lived through most of the 20th century, like Jacques Tati, he died in 1972 at the age of 75, 1982, age of 75, uh, this, this repetition becomes the trope of human life, that we as employees or professionals are forced to repeat the same gestures. And we've lost the meaning. We've lost the sense of what the gestures are for. We have automobiles, but automobiles are just another way to regulate life in a grid or place us in a cage. You'll see a lot of simple shots of people inside cars. They're alone. And, and they're lost, they don't have anything. They don't have anything in their, on their mind. They're stuck in traffic, and uh, maybe they put a finger up their nose or scratch their head. And we look at them like animals that are caged or like fish in a bowl. And the movie is about mobility, but it's about the failure of mobility. We all jump on a car to go where? Whatever is the destination, we can never get there because there are other cars. And so constantly throughout this film, you see people in a car, they get on a car, they may start quickly and then they stop. And then of course you move a few inches forward, a few inches forward, and then maybe you have an accident. And the destination seems to be farther away. To amplify the irony of this message, the movie takes place in July 1969. So at some point, you see people gathering in a godforsaken place in Holland, in a place that is near a canal where boats are just floating by sailboats and people are living in houseboats and there are teenagers on the road playing with a barrel and broken cars all around the garage. In a place like that, people are gathering around the TV to see the man step in on, on the ground of the moon for the first time. So, it seems easy enough to get to the moon, but for the characters in the film, it seems impossible to get 
from France to Amsterdam, which is only a few hours away. And the purpose of this mission, this journey, is the following. The protagonists all work for a company called Altra, or Altra, since it is a French company, who's made a camping vehicle, a recreational vehicle, which is a fancy Renault for l modified with all sorts of gadgets, because gadgets, of course, uh, are, are key to the marketing of the automobiles. They have to take this new prototype to an auto show in Amsterdam, and by the time they get there, the auto show is, is over. And they have a truck that is transporting this recreational vehicle that breaks all the time, and the paradox is that the truck is transporting a vehicle. So why don't you unload the prototype and then drive to Amsterdam? But constantly throughout the movie, we see vehicles transporting other vehicles or people in cars who it looks like they'll never get anywhere. So they spend their life in cars. And uh, this, uh, uh, the, the other way the movie emphasizes the paradox of impossible mobility is that everywhere you see cars on the road, parked cars, but you also see piles and piles of junk cars, of cars that are broken and discarded. So they're everywhere and they've become part of our life, but they're not granting us any mobility, any additional life or, or quality to our life. So Jacques Tati is the old man who's the designer of the car. At the beginning of the film, we see a factory producing cars and you get the fact that everything in this film is a pattern of choreographed actions, that everything is like an assembly line. The life itself is like an assembly line and therefore we behave robotically. Then we see the place where the recreational vehicle is being prepared for the show. Then they leave on this old track and two vehicles to go to the show. At the end, the car will never make it to the show before the show is over. And the stand that was supposed to showcase this recreational vehicle becomes uh, uh, a joke because it's the only stand at the auto show with no car. But they have, since it is a recreational vehicle, they have fake trees in the background and they have fake bird sounds in the background. So no car at all. What they're showing is an empty space devoid of cars and therefore they're showing the opposite of mobility. We'll see them have several accidents, get out of gas, re they, they, they remain out of gas and uh, they, they cross the boundary, the, the border between France and Belgium and they're stopped uh, by, by the police or is it the border between Belgium and Holland? One of those two. And the car will never be showcased at the other show but it, it is shown to you at the beginning of the movie. It is shown to the police officers who are manning the borders in all sorts of places where that demonstration doesn't belong. So the, the, the symbolic significance of this is the lack of meaning for our life. We're always disconnected from sense and meaning. This copy we see now was restored. By the end of his life, Jack Tati was impoverished Remember, he was an Oscar-winning director, but during the 1960s, 1967, a movie came out, Playtime, where he got a lot of money. He spent too much time doing the movie, and then the movie didn't make money, so he lost all the rights to this film, other films. His uh, uh, kids, his daughter and his son, were able to get the rights to the movie back, and they uh, created a foundation called Mon Mononcle, from the title of the film that won him an Oscar. Uh, and uh, the, the films were restored and, and circulated. Okay, so 